Being mindful is the practice of maintaining a non-judgmental state of heightened or complete awareness of one's thoughts, emotions, or experiences on a moment-to-moment basis, which can be extremely important while trying to understand and learn more about mental health. So let me welcome you to Mindful Thoughts. My name is Dolores, and I feel like my mission in life is to help break down those barriers around mental wellness by sharing personal stories, tips, and confessions of mental health to help us shine a light on mental wellness. So what are we waiting for? Let's dive in. Hey guys, before we jump in today's episode, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's listened so far. If you're somebody new or somebody who's followed me from the beginning, I just appreciate you guys so much for, you know, tuning in each week and pressing play and listening to these episodes because if you're somebody who's been here from the beginning, you know that at first it was rough. And over the last two years of podcasting, I'm really trying to hone in to how I want these episodes to go and how I want to talk to you guys. And it just, I am just very appreciative of everybody who's listening. You know, if you're someone who's suffering from mental health and you're listening in to not feel alone, or if you're somebody who's new to mental health and you're trying to learn as much as you can about it, no matter where you're at, uh, it's just, It warms my heart to know that there's people out there that, you know, want to just learn more about mental health and everything, and that's just what I really want to do is just, you know, share more about mental health so it's something you talk about more and more people can share and it's not something that is kept quiet. So again, thank you so much to everybody so far who's listened. Thank you for listening today and let's jump into today's episode. Uh, Today we're going to talk about the benefits of mental wellness because so many people think that mental wellness and mental health are the same thing and they're not. So they do function together hand in hand um, but mental wellness is something all on its own. So mental wellness is an internal resource that helps you think, feel, connect, and function. It is an active process that helps to build resilience, growth, and to help you flourish. Now, like I said, your mental health and wellness contribute a lot towards how you function in your life. Identify the things that make you feel happy and continue to incorporate them into your life. By improving your mental wellness, your mental health will improve as well, which can help you live a happy and healthier life. Now, people who develop and experience wellness also have what researchers call grit. Grit is comprised of passions and preservations and meanings to show up for their lives. It's a never give up attitude. Grit doesn't mean never failing. Your failure is a part of success and life itself. Grit means getting up when you have fallen down. So for example, a person with anxiety and depression, they get up every single morning, they create a goal for that day, they take those small steps towards it, and at the end of the day, they acknowledge the bravery and the progress that they made. So when you're someone who's suffering with a mental health illness, you might have grit just waking up in the morning and going about your day, doing your normal routine. It doesn't have to be something big. It can be just the small little steps on those days where you're having a really rough day and you're really down in the dumps, but you still get up, you still brush your teeth, you still work out, you still take care of your body, you go to work, you spend time with friends, those things are still something to you that is, you have that grit to keep going even when you don't feel like going. And when you fail at something, like grit is knowing that like it's okay to fail and you're not gonna give up, you're gonna keep going. And in that moment where you feel so defeated, it's saying, okay, you know what? This is something to learn from. This is something to take with me. 
uh, into tomorrow and I can learn to keep going. So again, grit doesn't have to be something big. It can be just those little things that get you through the day and help you keep moving. So I want to share with you how you can create a balanced life. Because creating a balanced life has eight different areas to help balance the life out. So these areas are spiritual, physical, emotional, financial, social, emotional, environmental, intelligence, and occupational. So first you're going to start with spiritual, the sense of connections in the world or the ability to feel purposeful and attribute meaning to life. So for a lot of people, spiritual means being connected to the spirit, to God, uh, to something out in the universe. Everybody has their own things spiritually. Maybe you don't believe in anything at all. But for most of us, we do have something that we believe in. And sometimes in those moments, like for me, I believe in God. And that's like being raised a Christian, everything like that's who I believe in and when I'm in those really hard moments I pray and I reach out and I say just help me and, and help me get through this and help me feel better and you know for like I said a lot of us have different things we believe in but sometimes in those moments we reach out to that being and that feeling or you know that person we believe is out there in the universe to help us and that's just our way of, you know, coping with what we're going through. The second one is uh, physical, our physical bodies, the need for movement, nutrition, and rest. I think that taking care of yourself physically is very important for a balanced life, even if you're not suffering from a mental health illness. Uh, any type of movement, working out, walking, biking, anything that gets your body moving, the stuff you're putting into your body, how are you, you know, what are you eating throughout the day, how are you taking care of yourself, and rest. Sleep is so important for you, and I just want everybody to learn that, like, some people are like, oh, I don't need sleep, I can just keep going. No, sleep is important for your well-being and your mental health when you're struggling, so remember to prioritize that rest. The next one is emotional. Psychological well-being, our ability to manage the challenges of life and feel fulfillment. I think that anybody who you talk to that has a mental health illness or is dealing with their mental health deal with a lot of emotions. You know, we cry a lot and our emotions hit us really hard and we feel things really deep. So it's one of those things to create a balance around that, to create this uh, motion for yourself to know when the emotions come up and why they come up and why you're feeling them and uh, to acknowledge them because I've said it many times that there are so many people who they just don't want to feel the feelings so it's easier to push the feelings down and not feeling them at all but that's not healthy for you so I encourage you to feel your emotions but also you know recognize when those emotions come up why they come up and learn to figure that out along the way so then over time you can feel the feelings of fulfillment and know that you are going to be okay even when the emotions come up. So the fourth one would be financial. Our degree of contentment with our financial resources, the sense of security. Money is such a big thing for everybody. And there is this mind frame with people that are like, if I have this amount of money, I am going to feel okay. Like, I'm going to have this sense of security inside me. So to create a balanced life, it's, you know, taking the spiritual, physical, and emotional, but also taking this financial and saying, like, I'm going to be okay even if I don't have this certain amount of money in my bank account and... I'm not just like striving for this amount of money because too many times we're striving for something and we're striving for this amount and now I'm going to be okay once I hit, you know, a thousand dollars, five thousand, ten thousand, uh, one million. It's like this amount where like I'm going to be okay. This is going to mean that I'm successful if I meet this amount of money and 
I truly think if you live like that, you're always going to be pushing and striving and going and going and going, and that's just not healthy. So maybe strive for, like I said, $1,000 or 2000 like start small and then grow, but have a healthy relationship with money. Your fifth one is going to be social. Our sense of belonging, connection, and support within our relationship circles. To create a balanced life, you need to have healthy relationships. And there are too many of us who have very unhealthy relationships that will keep going in those relationships because we have this fear of losing somebody or not having somebody in our lives. And most of the time, we don't recognize when people in our lives are just not meant to be there. You know, we're in bad relationships. Our friends are bringing us down. Sometimes they're even family members in your life that just like are very unhealthy and they're toxic. And it's really good, you know, to have a sense of belonging, but belong to a connection and support with people around you that are supporting you and loving on you and not making you feel down and not making you feel bad about yourself. So it is important to find those people again, that are, are going to help you succeed and not hold you back. So number six is your environment. The backdrop of our lives, which is home life, workplace, community, world, etc. Your environment is everything around you. The people you interact with, with it through the day, where you go to work and everything. And if you don't have a balanced life of all of this, and you're not looking for those things in your environment that are not good for you, then sometimes the environments we put ourselves in are not good. So it's good to, you know, break down the things in your environment. How's your home life doing? How's your, you know, how's work doing? How are the communities you're putting yourself in? Are you getting something from it? Are you feeling fulfilled? Are, is it at the end of the day making you feel good when you lay your head down on the pillow, you feel the like the day was really good and you know you had good experiences and good conversations and it's important to also realize when you put yourself in bad environments when your mood's down and you're not happy and you're feeling certain ways you know to create a balanced life you have to look at everything around you and you know work on that and create those environments that are going to be good for you. Number seven is intelligence, our creative outlets. The ability to take on challenges that expand our understanding, acknowledge, and skills. Being creative is a way for people to connect with other people. So it could be being creative on social media, it could be creating YouTube videos, it could be doing podcasts, People like to paint, they uh, like to knit. Have something that you're able to put your creativity in because that area of your life is when things get really hard or you seem like things aren't going your way. It's almost like having a hobby where you enjoy doing it. It's a moment to take a step back and take care of yourself and do something for you and not worry about everything else that is going out out in the world and the things you can't control. So I encourage everybody to have something as a creative outlet to go to, to relax. Uh, even if it's reading and like I said, painting, just something that brings you joy and relaxes you and resets you before you have to go back out into the world and you know navigate whatever you're going through and the last one is occupational the sense of fulfillment one gets from their job so to have a balanced life all around you should be doing something that brings you joy you should be working somewhere that makes you happy to go there and you know that when you go there, you're, you're going to put the work in and you're going to do something good and it's going to make a change because too many of us will work at a job where we're miserable, but you know, we need the money and that's where the financial comes in. And if we don't have a job, then we don't have the money and we can't pay our bills and we will work somewhere where it just makes us miserable and we don't want to be there and we just dread going there every day. And when you feel that way, like the just 
enjoyment you would get out of work or the sense of fulfillment is not going to be there because you are just simply not enjoying where you're working and the time you're spending and for a lot of us we'll look back and be like I wasted so much time doing something that just you know sucked the life out of me and I didn't enjoy so I'm not encouraging you please don't take this as encouraging you to go and quit your job because you don't like it I think if you're working somewhere that you don't enjoy you know talk to a, a, a co-workers about it talk to your boss see if there's another you know department that you have really wanted to work in that uh, you can go and work in and try something new or ask to learn something new you know upgrade your position but if you're somewhere where you just feel like you know you've learned it all and there's nothing left but there's another job out there that you've really wanted to do and you've just never you know put an application in because you don't think you're going to be able to do it I encourage you to put that application in and go for it and just try it because you will never know if you are fully going to enjoy something unless you take that first step and try it so again let's go through how you would create a well-balanced life and that is first to see the sense of connection in your world which is your spiritual connection Number two is to take care of your body, your physical body. You need to take care of it to create a balanced life. How are your emotions? You know, creating a balanced life is taking care of your emotions while taking care of your physical body. How are you doing financially? Are you worried about money? Or you always concerned about how are you going to pay the bills? Try to, you know, not do that and try to create a balanced life and saying like, I have enough. I have a roof over my head. I have food and start from there and grow and the next one to create a balanced life is how are you doing socially what is your your connections uh, you know and support in your relationships and your friend groups and you know really hone in on that your environment around you uh, creating a balanced life is knowing what's good for you and what's not good for you and working towards that your intelligence which your creative outlets what brings you joy and lastly your occupational, where you're working and what you're spending your time doing. And if it's not making you feel a sense of fulfillment, maybe that's a sign that you need to find, you know, that thing that's going to light you up inside again. This created of a balanced life is called the well of wellness. All of the eight dimensions are interconnected and are important to living a well-rounded and balanced lifestyle. So when you start creating this balanced life, I want you to go through all eight of these and kind of see where you're at on each one and whichever ones you need to work at, work at, and then keep working at it every single day. So before I leave you, I want to share with you seven self-care tips for improving your mental wellness. Number one would be to take a long relaxing soak with bath salts. It's a way just to relax and de-stress from the day and you know not worry about anything that went on. Number two is get creative. Write down some aspirations and create a vision board. Do something again creative for yourself that brings you joy and sets your heart on fire and makes you just like feel so connected and centered with yourself. Number three is to listen to your favorite music, audiobooks, or podcasts. For some people, when they're really, really down, they like to listen to certain podcasts that help them and inspire them and motivate them or people like to put on a playlist and dance around silly all by themselves because that brings them joy and makes them happy and if that's what you need to do for yourself I encourage you to do that. Number four is to have a pamper evening face and hair mask. So have an evening where you just pamper yourself, pour yourself a, cla a glass of wine, you know, watch a movie, get your, get, get, clean your face and, uh, you know, do a hair mask or whatever makes you feel pampered. Or maybe for an evening you go somewhere and you get a massage and you just feel so good and, you know, do that for yourself. 
to, you know, again, just be with yourself and connected with yourself and just feel good. Number five is breath work and present moments to meditate to calm the mind. Uh, a lot of people are getting into breath work to calm them down and meditation just to kind of sit in the silence and soak it all in and again be centered with yourself. A lot of people I, again are doing breath work because that's another way to get connected with yourself and you know f sometimes things come up and you'll, you'll feel feelings and you, you work through that with yourself. So I encourage you to try those or try journaling. That's another form of just, you know, getting it out and not sitting with it and seeing how you feel at the end of it. Number six is to make some fruit infused water. A lot of people like to put fruit in their water. They like to put lemons and stuff like that. So you can try different things. Or number seven, you could do herbal tea or hot chocolate. Just a drink that warms you up inside at the end of the day to help you, you know, de-stress from what is going on in your life. So I'm hoping that after this episode, you can go back and just create a balanced life for you because your mental wellness is important for your mental health because they can be so connected. And when you start to balance your life out, then you can find ways to help balance your mental health. Everything in life is a journey and the more you work at it, the easier it's going to be. So anybody who wants to work on their mental health, maybe also work on your mental wellness and take care of yourself and, you know, do what you need to do for you. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's you against you. It's not you against the world. You make your decisions. You choose how you want to live your life. And if you want to improve your mental wellness and live a balanced life, then you need to work on it and figure it out and do what you need to do for you. I, for a long time, have struggled to, you know, really focus on what I need to do for myself. And within the last few years, I've been able to really lock those down. Like, what makes me feel better or what I need in those moments or feeling my emotions and really sitting with them and figuring them out. So I think it's just important for you to figure out what you need to do for yourself and then continue to work on that every single day to have that balance, balanced life you want or like I said, start creating that balanced life that you want because Every day is a new opportunity to do what you need to do for yourself and then keep doing that every single day afterwards. So I will always leave you with what I leave you with is that you are never alone and that I love you. Thank you so much for listening to another episode. And you know what would be so amazing? If you shared, left a comment, and liked this episode. Any type of support and love for this podcast is going to help it grow more and more every day. I'm so grateful to have you here, and I'll talk to you again soon.